Hi everyone, my name is Jack Neal and welcome back to my YouTube channel, where we cover all things horrifying, disturbing, and morbid. In today's video, we will be going in-depth on three clips that may seem innocent, but will absolutely curdle your blood when you know the backstory. I strongly suggest that you murder the like button, or else. Let's begin the video. And don't forget, look behind you. On June 21st, 2020, a group of teens were filming a TikTok while using a popular exploring app called Randonautica. Randonautica was released in February of 2020 and allows users to focus on an intention and the app will then generate coordinates within a set area for them to explore, supposedly turning your thoughts into a reality. The TikTok shows the friends following the coordinates, leading them to a mysterious black suitcase on a beach in Seattle. It appears to have washed up on some rocks, and the friends begin laughing and joking around, even going as far as encouraging one of the girls to open the suitcase. And when she inevitably opens the top of the suitcase using a wooden stick, she finds a black garbage bag inside with a foul stench. The teen's attitude about the situation then becomes very serious, and they proceed to call the police who later reveal that the contents inside of the suitcase were mutilated body parts. The human remains were later identified and were found to belong to 35-year-old Jessica Lewis and her boyfriend of 8 years, 27-year-old Austin Winter. Further investigations revealed that their landlord, Michael Lee Dudley, fatally shot the couple after an argument about unpaid rent, causing him to get two counts of second-degree murder. Now, there are a few things about this case that I personally find deeply disturbing. I mean, it had to be extremely traumatizing for those teens who found the suitcase to begin with. I personally would not be able to sleep for at least a few days after finding something as creepy as that. Those kids are gonna need some therapy. The fact that the Randonautica app took them there in the first place is creepy as hell. And apparently there are tons of other instances where people came across extremely disturbing things while using the app, like signs of extraterrestrial life, creepy ghost in graveyards, but this one has to be the worst of them all. I will not be trying it anytime soon. Let's move on to number two. Byron Bernstein, a popular streamer known by his Twitch name Wreckful, was one of the highest ranking World of Warcraft players and a professional esports player. He had almost a million Twitch followers and in 2017 was ranked the fourth highest earning streamer in the world. In one of his final streams, Byron jokes about taking his own life and even mentions testing out to see if he could survive a fall from his balcony. On July 2nd, 2020, a month after this stream aired, Byron took his own life after jumping from that same balcony. Many were shocked by the streamer's death, but close friends and longtime fans of Byron knew about the streamer's history with depression and how it ran in his family even taking the life of his older brother Guy when Byron was just six years old. He'd often mention how this event had a major impact on his life and eventually led into his own struggles with depression. Early on the morning that Byron took his own life, he posted a series of concerning tweets, one in which he even proposes to his ex-girlfriend, Becca Cho. He followed up with the tweet saying, Ah, I feel bad for anyone who has to deal with my insanity. Asking his followers to please just know in these situations the insane person does not feel in control of their actions. Many friends, family, and even some of Byron's former girlfriends soon after tweeted saying that Byron had taken his own life and voiced how much they regretted not reaching out and trying to help him. Byron's older brother Gary tweeted out saying, My baby brother Byron at Wreckful is gone. R.I.P. He left in a similar way as my older brother Guy. I have no siblings left. Alright, chat. I hope you guys had a nice day. I, um, I'm gonna go offline. I guess I'll try to find something to watch for a tiny bit before I pass out. World stuff right now. Maybe, maybe it's all uphill from here. So, have a good night. See you guys tomorrow or the next day. In August of 2020, following the news of his death, World of Warcraft paid tribute to Byron by adding an in-game trainer named after his online alias, Wreckful, permanently to the game. 
David and Louise Turpin were a couple from Virginia who got married when David was 23 and Louise was 16. The couple strictly followed the beliefs surrounding the Quiverful movement, and for those of you who aren't familiar, it's a Christian ideology that prioritizes the mother's role as homemaker under the authority of the father, and the children are supposed to be obedient and under the authority of both. And parents who believe in this ideology often shelter their kids from aspects of culture that conflict with their religious beliefs. There are 13 Turpin children, all whose names begin with the letter J, and David's parents later revealed that the couple continued to have children because they felt that God called them to do so. And in 2013, David and Louise Turpin took their 13 children all the way to Las Vegas to get their wedding vows renewed. The video, while strange, with an Elvis impersonator officiating the wedding and all 13 children sporting matching outfits with the girls in purple plaid dresses and the boys in matching suits, is less innocent than it seems. The kids seem to be overall having a good time singing and dancing along with the Elvis impersonator, but the story behind this video is absolute nightmare fuel. And what makes the horrifying truth about the Turpin family so shocking is that various family members of the Turpins said that their Facebook photos would allude to the fact that they were just one big happy family. But on January 14th, 2018, two of the Turpin girls, ages 13 and 17, managed to escape the family home through a window. The younger of the two girls eventually got scared and turned back, but the 17-year-old, Jordan, managed to distance herself away from the Turpin home. She'd stolen her mom's phone that had no service, but a little known fact is even if a phone has no service and there's a nearby cell reception tower, you can still make an emergency call. This is the phone call that Jordan made to police. What's your name? Jordan Turpin. Yeah, I live in a family of 15 people and my parents are abusing, they abuse us, and my two little sisters right now are chained up. And how many of your siblings are tied up? Two of my sisters, one of my brothers. How are they tied up, with rope or with what? With chains. They're chained up to their bed. I've never been out. I don't go out much, so I don't know anything about the streets or anything. Following the call, police officers met Jordan and she showed them pictures of what was happening inside of the home. Police then proceeded to raid the Turpin house where they found the other 12 children and one of them was shackled to a bed with two others appearing to have just been recently shackled. Deputies of the Riverside County Sheriff's Department noted that the children were in such poor condition and were so underfed and malnourished that the oldest of them, a 29-year-old, weighed just 82 pounds. Hundreds of journals were found detailing the children's experiences, and many interviews were conducted that found that the parents had locked their children in their room for hours on end, physically harmed them, and only allowed them to eat just once per day and shower only once a year. Many of the kids lacked basic knowledge of the outside world and were unfamiliar of concepts such as law enforcement and medicine. Following their rescue, all 13 children spent several weeks in hospitals, and in early 2020, the Riverside County District Attorney stated that some of them live independently, have jobs, go to school, and one of them even graduated from college. David and Luis faced 25 different charges, and both of them were given life in prison. Because of the extraordinary nature of this case, with 13 children involved in over 30 years of systematic abuse, the story gained national media attention and became one of history's most horrific cases of child abuse.